Hi everybody, welcome back to the studio. My name is Victoria Armstrong and I'm the owner of Side by Side Consulting Services. And today I thought that I would share another aspect of pedagogical documentation as it seems like from my pedagogical documentation videos that I've done so far um, and the views that I've had on them, it seems like this is a topic that is of importance to you and um, you're finding value in. So um, I'm so happy to hear that. And so I thought that I would share another aspect of documentation with you today. And that's this idea of display and what makes an effective display and what's the difference between display and written documentation um, that I had talked about in a previous video. So when we think about something like a display, we're thinking about something on a large scale. So something like a bulletin board, something like a large panel, um, that's what we're talking about when we think about display. Um, written documentation, like I had talked about in a previous video, is something that would be on um, a smaller piece of paper um, that you might have displayed in your classroom um, in a binder or um, perhaps it might go in children's portfolios, um, but that's on a much smaller scale and is um, more specific to uh, one particular moment perhaps that you've noticed. So when we think about display, we're thinking about uh, telling a story. And so I like to think about um, when you first think about what am I going to do as a display, you want to think about what's the story that I want to tell? What is it that I've noticed um, over, oftentimes it'll be over an extended period of time. What is it that I've noticed over an extended period of time that I really want to share with people now? Um, if perhaps there's something that you've been observing for the past month or the past couple months or past couple weeks um, and you've captured lots of written documentation, you've captured lots of photos, lots of videos, um, and there's perhaps a theme or a big idea that you're seeing woven through this, um, this uh, experience that you've been observing or this idea or um, this curiosity that children have um, and you decide that you want to you want to create a display you want to create um, something larger that you can invite more people to think more about and so you want to first think about what's the story that I want to tell once you decide on the story that you want to tell you want to think about which kind of which photos because um, you probably have collected lots of photos which specific photos which specific written text um, which specific transcriptions of children's conversations or words children's work, perhaps their drawings, maybe clay work, wire work, um, which is going to best tell this story. Um, and then you want to think about what do I want to invite the reader to think more about and what they think about is going to be determined by the focus that you choose, by the photos that you choose, the text that you choose, questions that you choose to include. Um, and so oftentimes displays are really great to do um, once you have um, uh, once you have a lot of documentation gathered so that you have um, pieces that you can pick from so that you can pick, okay, this best tells this story. So if I want to tell this particular story about children's, um, children's observations of uh, springtime, maybe you've been noticing as, as spring has started to come, you've been noticing the children's um, observations of how, what does spring mean? What, what is happening outside? What changes are happening? Um, and you've kind of noticed this ongoing curiosity with um, changes happening in springtime. And so you've been collecting photos and documentation and, and text and children's work, children's drawings. And so now that's the focus. You want to think about which of these photos is going to best tell this story. Um, which of these children's work samples is going to best tell this story as well too. And use those in your display. Some things that you want to think about when you're, um, when you're creating a display, the kind of aesthetics that you want to think about is um, it's very different than um, something on a smaller scale, like I had said. So on a larger scale, you want to think about using really large font, for example, so 18 or 20 point font. So you want the text to be really big so that people, um, people can read it easily. If people can't read it easily, they're likely not going to read it. You also want to think about making sure that you have a neutral background. So you'll see on this panel here, I just have a plain white background. Um, oftentimes we, um, we think with displays that we have to have a, a colorful background. We need to have maybe sparkles or different colors or fancy lettering that actually detracts from whatever your focus is because the focus then becomes on the things that we, that we put there maybe to seem pretty or to seem decorative and it takes away from the actual focus that you have from the children's words, from their work, from the photos that you've chosen as well too. So you want to make sure that you keep a neutral background so that the photos and your text and children's words and children's work becomes the focus of your display and the focus of what people look at. You also want to, you also want to make sure that your photos are really large. So in a smaller piece of written documentation, your photos are obviously going to be smaller. When you're thinking about display in a large scale, you want the photos to be really big, like think about size, you know, 
um, 8 by 10 type photos. You want them to be really large so that people can see easily um, the details in that photo. And so of course that obviously speaks to the importance of photo selection and choosing really good photos that highlight details that you want people to notice and to focus on. So make sure you have really large photos that you've selected. You also want to think about having a really concise title. So something that's gonna draw the reader in. This goes back to the uh, piece of written documentation that I just talked about as well too. Your title is what draws the reader in. It's what's gonna tell people what you want them to focus on as well too, what you want them to think more about. Um, so you wanna have a concise title that's clear and that's legible that people can easily read. Um, and then you also want to think about making sure that your, your display isn't too busy. So you don't want to have too, too many photos, you don't want to have too much text, um, you don't want it to be too busy, otherwise people won't know what to focus on. And then again, your focus and what you're wanting people to think more about could be missed. So large photos, what I do, um, children's text as well too, I often do it in a different color. Um, so if I have my regular text in black, um, sometimes I'll do the children's words in blue so it stands out a little bit more so you're drawn to the words that the children have said. Um, and that's often a nice aesthetic element to add um, just to highlight what children were saying in this experience and that you're wanting people to focus on as well too. Um, and then oftentimes um, you can think about um, uh, different different headings or different ways that you're going to tell your story or the big idea kind of broken down into different sections um, and then pick photos and text that's going to highlight each of those big ideas that you've come to notice. Um, so again you want to keep a neutral background, um, large photos, uh, simple text but descriptive text, you want to have a clear and concise title um, and you want to really think about what your focus is, what it is that you want your reader to focus on um, and what story it is that you want to tell. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have more questions about display or you have more questions about um, anything related to pedagogical documentation, I would love to chat more with you. Um, feel free to send me an email at victoria at sbsconsulting.ca. Um, and if you like this video, like it, subscribe to my channel, um, share this video with your colleagues. Um, I love being able to support um, educa educators with um, the important work of pedagogical documentation. So thanks so much for listening, guys, and um, talk to you soon. Take care.